Uh, in this video today, we're going to look at a top tier selective functional movement assessment. Uh, my model here, Andrea, is going to show us some of the movements that she's got, and then we're going to try and break it out where we see any problems existing. So first, we're going to look at the neck. So what I want to do here, Andrew, if you can just tuck your chin to your chest. That looks fine, no problems at all, no pain there. Good, up into extension. She gets good movement through here. There's a little bit more emphasis on one side and maybe we'll view that later. Now I want you to rotate your head uh, as far left as you can go. And that looks quite good, chin getting to the, to the mid clavicle and to this side. Here we can see a bit of a restriction here. The chin quite can't make the, the mid clavicle here. So we're gonna go and break this out and look at uh, some restrictions that might be occurring within the neck or other parts of the body that stop her getting full range of motion in the neck. Okay, can you turn and face this way, Andrew? Okay, now we're gonna look at internal rotation of the shoulder. Take this hand to touch the opposite scapula. Okay, uh, it's a little bit of a, a, a tricky movement. So again, we'll go and break this down. She has a bit of discomfort when she does this. It's some pain in here. Okay, we'll try the other side, compare the right. The internal rotation here, a little bit more restricted, the movement's a bit clunky. Uh, so in standing, there might be a postural uh, motor control issue that we want to go and look at on the couch in just a second. We'll now compare external rotation, hand up above the head and touch the opposite scapula for me. Okay, that looks good. Maybe a little bit tight in, 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 uh, in the shoulder over here, so we'll go and look at that. There's certainly some restriction, perhaps in mobility, maybe in stability, and this side as well. And again, maybe something in here as well, but we'll go and break that out at a later date. Okay, what I'd like you to do now is uh, feet closer together. We're comparing rotation here between the thorax and the hips. Rotate to your left, keep your feet on the floor. And we can see through here quite nicely that uh, the, the hip comes to about 40, 45, 50 degrees, which is great. And the shoulder dissociates quite nicely, which is good. Okay, let's try the other side. Okay, same thing through here. Perhaps there's something going on within the trunk muscles that cause her to over recruit some of the trunk muscles in a certain pattern, but we'll break out the rotation pattern at a later, at a later date. Okay, um, just turn and face me. Uh, just there actually. Let's touch your toes. Okay, she's got a good flexion pattern in the spine, but um, it, there's a little bit of a flattening through here and she doesn't like to uh, push her hips back as much. So this may be something we want to view when we break out the flexion pattern and come stand up and hands up above your head. And now I want you to do is to, to, to lean backwards. Okay. Okay, what we see here, she has absolutely great extension, but what we do see is a relative amount of extension in the spine compared to hip extension. Would it be fair to say that you get a little bit of a jamming up in the back when that happens? Yeah. So back muscles are great compensators and, and movers and so we probably want to see if there's any uh, relative um, issues going on related to spinal extensors to hip extensors and that's something we can do when we break out and take it to the couch. Uh, just turn and face me and face the camera. Good and stand on one leg. The single leg stance is a great stance for just looking at overall balance uh, it can have some carryover to gait, but we want to see what happens within the foot. If there's any previous ankle injuries, we can see this come up and sometimes affect what's going on in the trunk and how she stabilizes through here. That's not too bad, a little bit of shift, but let's try the other side. Okay, she doesn't like this too much and you can see there's a little bit of imbalance here. We might want to try some perturbation tests with this and see how she is with balance. Have you had an ankle injury before? She's got a rather large ankle injury where she's uh, ruptured her Achilles tendon here. So we can see there's a little bit of guessing going on by the nervous system. Doesn't like it too much and we, we may need to break this out further or look at some, some of the, uh, the previous injury artifacts that we need to address to make her feel a little bit more comfortable on this side. Okay, drop down. Excellent. Let's have a look at a squat. Uh, hips a little bit wider to so your squat position and just try that. Okay, she's got a nice squat position. She goes down quite low. Um, we might need to look and see what's going on below the tibia. She certainly has a hard time in her shoulders because she flexes her shoulders. So let's bring her up out of that. I certainly think if I just take her down and you just uh, take the hands out of that and just squat again. Okay, you can see the squat position is still good um, and we might need to investigate what's going on with the shoulders. Stand up again. Uh, and here we see in the squat as well, she really likes to use her back muscles to get up, which may mean that the glutes are having a bit of a hard time working appropriately. So we're going to now break out some of the tests that are relevant to finding out more about Andrew's biomechanics from the top tier screen that we've just done. Let's go and look at the couch. Okay, so let's have you on the couch, Andrea. 
There are a couple of uh, specific things that I saw within the top t test that I wanted to break out and confirm my findings about what the issue are. A lot of people get wrapped up of whether the muscles are tight or they have the mobility, but really mobility is often a product of how much stability there is within the system. So if you can't organize your muscles to create uh, good spinal stability uh, throughout the whole spine, then you often find that other muscles, other joints tend to become slightly dysfunctional because they don't have a good stable base to work from. One of the first top tier things that we saw was Andrea's inability to rotate her neck fully towards the uh, right hand side. So all we're going to do now is take away the, the stress of gravity and let her do this dying, uh, lying down. So Andrea, if you'd like to turn your head to the right. Okay. And if we compare this, it's actually in a very similar position. But all we know at the moment is that she can't turn her head in the same position lying down with um, less gravitational and postural stress. So she can't do it this way, so now I'm going to do it for her passively. We've seen the active version, so I'm just going to rotate her head gently to the right. And now we can see that the actual the movement is there. So she doesn't have a mobility issue with this, she has a stability. So there's no point in going to give her lots of neck stretches that are going to just kind of uh, upset her neck even further because she has the ability to do it herself, she just doesn't have the appropriate program in standing or laying down to do it herself. So we need to find a program that's going to help all these muscles fire up and we're going to look at that at a later date. So we can actually break it out further uh, for uh, a specific muscle test. I'm testing her uh, cervical extensors. When I ask her to push back through here, uh, rotators and extensors, push back Andrea, um, it's actually a little bit spongy through here and she has a hard time engaging the muscles appropriately. If we check it out on the other side, push back Andrea, she has a really good connection through there, it's nice and solid, okay, it's, it's, uh, when we ask her to do the conscious contraction it's there. Now if we go back to the other side and push back, you can see here it's become even spongier. So once we've increased the tone of this particular uh, muscle, it has an inhibitory effect on the muscles on the other side that will help to also cause rotation. Prime rotators of the neck tend to be sternocleidomastoid and the posterior neck muscles. So here, for example, she's gonna have an issue perhaps in the splenius or one of the other muscles, and we can feel this is particularly nasty and knotted up. So this would be our, our, our area of intervention uh, once we come to treat this. Now we come to look at one of the breakout patterns. Although I'm not specifically testing extension here, what I'm thinking going on is that Andrea's super strong uh, spinal extensors are contributing to uh, gluteus weakness. So what we're going to do here is have a look and just test out her ability to extend her hip. Some people might argue that this test isn't appropriate because they're laying down on their front, but all I'm doing here is her ability to consciously contract her glute muscles and create hip extension. Now if you lift her left leg up and ask her to hold that there, and push against me, hold strong, good. You can see here that she loses her tone pretty, pretty quickly, okay? And we'll test this side. We'll actually test the range of motion here first. Lift up, hip extension. She can extend her hip with a, the, the, the obligatory 10 degrees. I'd like to see a bit more, but she really likes to use some of her lateral hip muscles to accomplish this. I'm just gonna uh, push her into the position that she doesn't like to go in, just neutral extension. And I'm gonna ask her to match my pressure here, hold. And you can see here that this fatigues very, very quickly as well. Now what we have, the problem uh, within this, and sometimes this can be related to a breathing pattern dysfunction, is that the, the paraspinal muscles, uh, these thick muscles in the back here, can contribute to inhibiting the glutes in a functional extension relationship. Can be because her core doesn't like to work appropriately and she tends to overbreathe using the paraspinals and the posterior diaphragm. One way we can assess this is the weaker muscles of the glutes in this position, which we, we have seen that when she holds up in this position, hold Andrea, which she doesn't, she, she has a really hard time holding. If I just find a spot, and usually you'll find a spot that's super, super tense. How does that feel? Is that tense? We found the right spot. The laughing always uh, will dictate whether we've got the right spot. If I ask her, first of all, just to extend the hip on her own, you can see that she's getting higher. And now hold strong, Andrea. But I can push a lot more 
just by simply creating less uh, function in the overworking paraspinal muscles and creating more extension uh, of the hip extensing muscles of the, the gluteus maximus. So it's a, a very common thing that you're going to find is overworking spinal muscles inhibiting the glutes and you'll often see that with a increased uh, spinal extension often presenting with a, a jamming up or pain in the lower back. Okay on this side we'll try the same thing. Okay and you can see that the extension here it's hard and it's, it's, it's a bit cranky for her. It's just dropped down. Uh, we're going to look for another spot here in the paraspinals. Again this feels kind of very ropey and overworked here and on that spot there I'm going to ask her to extend her hip. And here you can see she actually gets up a little bit higher. Does that feel a little bit easier? Yeah, good. And I'm going to ask her to, to, to present a, a nice strength test again here. Hold strong. And you can see here I'm pushing much harder and the tone in the glute uh, is enhanced and uh, her ability to extend her hip is normalized. What this was do, will do with appropriate retraining of uh, detoning the spinal extensors increasing the uh, glute tone might be appropriate but we might, might need to look at more central strategies related to her breathing pattern and how she stabilizes her core. So this is a very common thing in extension and this is something that we're going to look to resolve within this treatment. Uh, so coming back to the neck we found increased um, tension in the neck on the left side which was stopping her rotate her neck to the right side and there was a problem really with the, with the spinal extensors uh, up in the cervical spine up here. We found a couple of spots here and I'm just going to treat this very very gently but obviously do this in a very different manner and what I want to see is just even just getting in here and helping to lower the load on this side. Now I'm going to get her to, to push back into extension through here Push back, Andrea, and into my hand. Good, and relax. We will try that again. You okay? We're on the right spot, huh? <laughs> okay. Okay, now rotate your head and push back. Okay, does it feel a little bit more organized now? Okay, just relax. Now try turning your head to the uh, right. And you feel you can get around more? Yeah, okay. So here we found here, even just going and treating some of the muscle tissue, we know that the muscle more often than not is not the primary problem and we want to investigate some of the areas that uh, are driving this. We might find something in a joint, we might find something with ligaments or other tissue. But here, just for now, for helping Andrea to help her, her neck and shoulder out, which is a little bit painful and jammed up, we've just treated this through here. We've asked her to rotate and extend and activate these spinal ro uh, rotators and extensors. We come back. We ask her to reinforce the movement pattern and now she rotates uh, absolutely perfectly. She can almost get 90 degrees in this position which is, which is what we might be looking for.